Two opposing tails stretch millions of kilometers from 3I Atlas, one streaming outward exactly as solar pressure dictates, the other aiming directly toward the Sun in defiance of everything we understand about cometary behavior. That sunward tail isn't just unusual, it's a physical paradox that forced astronomers to predict catastrophic breakup as the only viable explanation. Either we see a fragmented object where the pieces will get separated from each other by the tide from the sun, so, or we would see an object that maintains its integrity and has very high speed jets coming out of it, in which case we will have to contemplate a technological origin. Except the newest observations just proved that prediction wrong. The object remained intact. And now physics has to explain how a single nucleus produces impossible geometry while surviving forces that should have shattered it into fragments weeks ago. Here's the measurement that started collapsing standard models. The sunward tail, astronomers call it an anti-tail, pointed at 106 degrees. The sun sat at 115 degrees, just nine degrees of offset. Picture a flag snapping forward into the wind instead of streaming backward. The conventional tail extended at 301 degrees, behaving precisely as radiation pressure models predict. Same nucleus, opposite physics, simultaneous operation. The tail is being pushed away from the sun by the solar radiation pressure and the solar wind. Here we see it going towards the sun. November 9th imagery captured both structures extending across millions of kilometers of space. Conventional models calculate gas expulsion velocities around 1,500 kilometers hourly. At that pace, forming tails measuring millions of kilometers requires continuous sublimation spanning months. Yet photographs from days earlier showed zero tail activity. Nothing visible, complete dormancy. We just got new images of it and to add some more strangeness to the three eye Atlas saga because like, I don't want to overhype this. But yeah, you see, it does not have a very big, very noticeable cometary tail. That's what we were thinking we were gonna see. Then suddenly, millions of kilometers of material appeared in the span of days. The formation timeline doesn't accommodate standard outgassing rates. Stop. This next contradiction forced the fragmentation hypothesis. Thermal energy requirements pointed to 1,600 square kilometers of solar absorption surface area, matching a 23-kilometer diameter sphere. Hubble's July measurements capped the actual nucleus at 5.6 kilometers maximum. You can't generate 23-kilometer thermal absorption from a 6-kilometer object. The discrepancy is fourfold. Monthly mass loss estimates reached 50 billion tons, despite total nucleus mass calculations of just 33 billion tons. We get a mass of 33 billion tons. That's the minimum mass. The object needs to be more massive than that. Imagine a reservoir draining 50 gallons monthly when it holds only 33 gallons total. The mathematics forces one conclusion. The object must be fragmenting, exposing fresh internal surface area as pieces separate. We'd witnessed identical mass loss paradoxes with Shoemaker-Levy 9 in 1992. That comet exhibited more material release than its calculated mass could explain. The resolution? Break up into 21 distinct fragments, each presenting independent surface area for sublimation. Astronomers have witnessed five massive explosions on the planet Jupiter as fragments from the Shoemaker-Levy collided with the planet. Larger explosions are expected later this week. They called it the biggest explosion in the solar system for hundreds of years. Half an hour after the first comet fragment went in, the impact was still visible. The cloud of debris spread out for thousands of miles and was over a thousand miles high. The astronomers were jubilant. We're going to see things and we're going to learn a lot. That's the good news tonight. The parallel seemed definitive. Seven distinct jets visible in November 8th observations, combined with those massive dual tails, pointed to catastrophic disintegration as the only mechanism reconciling the numbers. 
One possibility is that these jets are powered by uh, pockets of ice that uh, is being uh, illuminated by sunlight and warmed up and, and uh, the ice sublimates and you end up with these jets. They go out to millions of kilometers away from the object. What astronomers discovered next contradicts standard fragmentation predictions. Canary Islands observations by David Jewett and Jane Liu produced findings titled simply, Still Single, documenting an intact nucleus surviving perihelion passage. They didn't casually glance and declare it whole. Analysis spanning 500,000 kilometers employed brightness enhancement, contour analysis, chromatic filtering, and radial sampling techniques. Every method designed to detect even small separated fragments. Published findings documented zero fragmentation signatures across all analysis methods. One luminous nucleus surrounded by an active coma generating those dual tails simultaneously. Breakup scenarios predict outward spreading debris fields with characteristic brightness distributions and distinct separation trails. If we are talking about the visitors that arrive at random, you know, rocks for example, or icy rocks, then uh, for everyone that we see in the inner solar system within the separation of the Earth from the Sun, there should be a quadrillion, right now, a 10 to the power 15 such objects within the, the solar system as a whole, going out to 100,000 times the Earth's sun separation. The reason is simple. The volume of the solar system at 100,000 times the Earth's sun separation, 100,000 is is, is, is basically a hundred thousand cubed uh, times the volume associated with the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. So for everyone you see near us, uh, you know, between the Earth and the Sun, there should be a quadrillion right now in the solar system. So definitely a very big number. Observations revealed no such patterns. If it had shattered into pieces, they'd be dispersing along orbital trajectories, creating multiple brightness peaks. The imaging showed none of that. So how does a 5.6-kilometer nucleus survive October 29th perihelion thermal stress and emerge two weeks later, producing dual-tail geometry that demands four times its actual surface area, while losing more mass monthly than it weighs? The physics connecting intact survival with impossible mass loss is where current models fail. Here's what the data suggests about this object's history. 3i Atlas likely predates our solar system by 7 to 10 billion years. Across that immense time span, billions of years of cosmic ray exposure. The energy in must equal the energy out, according to the ordinary theory. But if that's not true, if there's more energy going out than in, it means that there's energy boost coming from whipping around the sun, and that requires intelligence. Energetic particle bombardment gradually transforming surface chemistry through radiation processing. Think of it as the universe slowly baking the outer layers across geological epochs, altering molecular bonds in ways solar system objects never experience. Webb spectroscopy revealed carbon dioxide abundance eight times typical cometary ratios relative to water content. Extended cosmic ray exposure potentially transformed carbon monoxide deposits into carbon dioxide across those billions of years, creating a chemical profile unlike anything formed in our sun's neighborhood. Those cosmic rays may have created radiation-altered surface layers fundamentally different from anything we've studied. These layers could be routing subsurface sublimation through internal fracture networks and pressure chambers invisible from external observations. The result? Bidirectional outflow with thermal exchange exceeding observable surface geometry. Channels carved through billions of years of radiation damage could create effective surface area far beyond what optical measurements detect. Alternatively, perhaps optical scattering efficiency is inflating apparent tail mass. The 50 billion ton monthly calculation derives from measuring tail brightness and calculating backward to determine material quantity but maybe billion-year-old interstellar material scatters sunlight with unusual efficiency we haven't encountered before. If revised estimates around 5 billion tons monthly prove accurate, the numbers suddenly reconcile with nucleus dimensions. Still extreme, but physically possible for an object this size. The anti-tail geometry might result from particle size distributions 
interacting with solar radiation pressure in ways only ancient interstellar material exhibits. Different grain sizes respond differently to photon pressure. If the sunward tail contains larger particles less affected by radiation pressure, they'd follow ballistic trajectories that appear sunward from certain viewing angles. It's rare, but documented in other comets under specific geometric conditions. What we're observing is an object producing dual tails pointing in opposite directions, defying opposite physical forces, intact against mathematical predictions. The tails exist, photographed across multiple observation campaigns. The mass loss is real, calculated from brightness measurements and spectroscopy. The survival is confirmed, documented through comprehensive fragmentation analysis. The physics connecting them is where models are still catching up to what 3i Atlas revealed. This isn't just a comet behaving strangely. It's a window into how billion-year journeys through interstellar space transform objects in ways our solar system can't replicate. Every measurement challenges assumptions built from studying comets born here, aged here, shaped by our sun's influence. Another faction, however, says now, wait a minute, perhaps this is a visitor, an intelligent visitor from another solar system, and perhaps this week we could have a test of it. That's right. This week, it turns out that the asteroid or comet will be whizzing around our sun, and if it picks up extra energy on its flyby, that would clinch it. That means there's extraterrestrial intelligence involved. So watch for it. On 3i Atlas spent eons in the cosmic dark, being altered by processes we're only beginning to understand. And now, it's showing us the results in real time, one impossible tale at a time.